That's actually a good and timely question on Ashura, Jazakallah khair. Mingling with the Rafidah and lack of teaching of Tawheed in our Masajid combined with the inner faith created a confused generation of youth in their Aqidah and in their worship. Similar to what you said, I met a younger brother who was telling me he's going to fast Ashura. And as you began talking, he said, because it, comm- because it commemorates the martyrdom, martyrdom of Imam Hussein, radiallahu anhu. That's not why we fast. The Rafidah have their Ashura. And we Ahl Sunnah have our Ashura. The only commonality between our Ashura and their Ashura is the name. That's the only thing that's similar. Everything else is different. So you understand it better. Linguistically, Ashura comes from Ashura. The number, the number 10. It's derivative from the number 10. To us Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, it's shar'i meaning to us is that it's the 10th day, Ashura from 10, the 10th day of the first Muslim calendar, the month of Muharram. It's the day we celebrate because it commemorates the day Allah rescued Musa alayhi salam and Bani Israel from Fir'aun. Again, we celebrate it because it commemorates the day Allah rescued Musa alayhi salatu salam from Fir'aun, him and his people. The Rafidah's version to it is that they claim that Al Hussein radiallahu an was killed on that day, and they like to revive that memory by beating themselves with chains and and uh, slashing their kids' foreheads and their foreheads and hitting their chest and backs with cha- chains. You know this foolish stuff you see every year. Uh, our Ashura again commemorates the rescue of Musa alayhi salatu salam from ben, from Fir'aun and his people, and the destruction of of Fir'aun and his army. Ibn Kathir did say in document in his book Al-Bidayah wa Nihayah that Al-Hussein radiallahu an our beloved died on Friday the 10th day of Muharram yes on this day 61 years after the Hijrah. We love him dearly. He's the grandson of our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa The master of the youth in Jannah. But we don't innovate to commemorate remembrance of his death or martyrdom. What the Rafidah do is really not to commemorate his martyrdom, but it's to commemorate and revive the hatred of Ahl Sunnah in their hearts and in their children's hearts every year. Because they accuse Ahl Sunnah of killing Al Hussein, radiallahu an, not knowing or not wanting to know that we love him more than they do. If they were sincere, why don't they do the same to commemorate Al Hussein's father's martyrdom, who's better than him? And he was killed by Ibn Muljam al Himyar. His father was killed too. Or take it a step further. Why don't they beat themselves to commemorate Al Hussein's grandfather, our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the best man to walk on the face of this earth, who died from the effect of the poison of the Jewish woman in Khaybar, who poisoned him, as he told Aisha on his deathbed, Ya Aisha, ma zala ajidu ta'am alladhi akaltu bi Khaybar. He told Aisha radiallahu anha, keep, you know, getting sick from the food that I ate in Khaybar, the poison that she gave me. And this is my final year. If they were genuine, why don't they do the same for Al Hussein's father and grandfather who are better than him? Because they're not sincere. The reason they're doing it is to revive hatred of Ahl Sunnah. Now our version, we say it's because Allah saved Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. In the Sahihain, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he went to Medina he found the Jews fasting the day of Ashura and he asked why do you fast this day they responded and they told him Allah saved Musa and his tribes from the enemies which is Fir'aun so we fast on this day to commemorate that victory the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and us we love Musa more than they do we have more of a right to Musa than you do. That's what he said. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and he ordered the believers to fast on that day. That's for the 10th day. That's our target day. That's the special day. That's why we call it Ashura from the number 10. But why do we fast the 9th? We should fast the 9th as well. In the 10th year of a hijrah, and you know the 10th year is the year before the Prophet sallallahu died. The Prophet sallallahu died on the 11th. In the 10th year, 
Ibn Abbas radiallahu an brought something to the attention of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said the Jews and Christians honored the 10th day of Muharram. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam immediately said, when the following year comes, Allah willing, we are going to add to it the ninth. We're going to also fast the ninth. However, this was the 10th year of Hijrah. The Prophet ﷺ died before the following year. He wanted to fast the ninth day. Why? To be different from the Jews and Christians and even the Quraishians. Because in another hadith that's authentic in Bukhari, even the Quraishians considered that day sacred and fasted that day. We said many times, and I told you uh, recently, I told you I compiled nearly all the authentic hadith that the Prophet ﷺ uh, ordered us to be different from other faiths in different aspects. It's a trend and a principle he built. I compiled nearly over 45 hadith. The purpose is to be distinct and to preserve our identity. Now the Prophet ﷺ died while only fasting the tenth. He only was fasting the tenth. He never lived to, sallallahu alayhi wa to fast the ninth. But it was clear and authentic that he would have fasted had he lived until next year. Why? To be different from the Jews and Christians and also the Quraishians who used to do that. Since he stated he would have fasted if he lived, he established that rule and the Sahaba understood that was the sunnah and it was what they went by after him. Which brings us to the next issue. The levels of fasting, Ashura. There's four levels. We start with the best and go to the least. The best of fasting, Ashura, is to fast the ninth and the tenth is the target day. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, if I lived, I would have fasted the ninth and the tenth. And it was what the Sahaba did and it was what's documented by Ibn Abbas and Ibn Umar radiallahu anhum. The second level of fasting is to fast the 10th and the 11th. That's slightly less in ranking than the first because the Prophet sallallahu said the 9th and the 10th. But maybe someone wasn't able to fast the 9th. He can go on and do the 10th and the 11th. That way, that way he combined between hitting the target day of the 10th, the day of Ashura, and he added a day after to be different. But it wasn't the same day that the Prophet ﷺ said. The third level of fasting is to just fast the tenth day. That's less than the first and the second. It's acceptable, but less in reward than one would have fasted the first and the second levels. The fourth level is to fast the ninth, tenth, and eleventh, all three days together. It's considered less because the Prophet ﷺ suggested the ninth and the tenth. He didn't suggest all three days. If one added the 11th in fasting with the intention of it being for Ashura, it drops down to the fourth level. If he intended the 11th day of, uh, of, of Muharram to be just a regular general day, that's totally different. Why is it less when it's three days? Because there's no authentic proof to fast all three days with the intention of it being Ashura. And note when I say there's no authentic, I'm specific in my, my choice of word. There may be narrations, but they're not authentic. So it's not proven by an authentic hadith, nor do we know actually any Sahabi who fasted all three days in the intention of Ashura. Fasting all three uh, was narrated in Ibn Shayba that Tawus did it. And Tawus is a tabi, not a Sahabi. He fasted all three days. But when you look deep into it, it was that they fasted, some of the tabi'een fasted the three days because they were fearing to miss the day of Ashura because there was a problem in Moon Sayyid. They weren't sure, so they decided to fast all three days so they will not miss the day of Ashura. If that happens in your community where there's an issue, then that's totally different. Also keep in mind, there's nothing in the authentic sunnah, and Imam Ahmad specifically stated so, in giving gifts to your kids on this day, nor is there anything authentic on wearing special clothes or putting perfume or using kuhr like some people do or say. If you want to do that as a habit on a regular day, you do it, but not on the intention of Ashura. There's nothing to back it up from the sunnah. For example, Jama'ah, we have proof that says to wear special clothes and to put perfume. And if you do that in the intention 
of obedience to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you're going to get reward. But there's nothing like that on Ashura. And when I say perfume, it's always for men when you go outside. Uh, the next important thing and the most important thing of it is what's the reward, what's the significance of fasting the 10th day? What do I get? The 10th day this year will be inshallah for us on Thursday. So you will fast Wednesday to be different and to t the target day of Ashura which is the 10th, which is be, well, the 9th, the, the 10th will be on Thursday. No matter what, don't miss the 10th. Try to add the 9th, but no matter what, don't miss the 10th. These days of iftar, these days is 5.15. That's when you have dinner. Someone wise will take advantage of these short days for fasting, let alone a very special day like Ashura. These days are so short that you don't even feel you're fasting. Maghrib time comes at 5.15 or so, and you're not even hungry or thirsty. The cold weather, I know brothers and they've told me in, like in Australia, uh, they've told me that the days there are still long. But, of course, inshallah, they're going to still fast. But over here, 5.15 the Maghrib, and you don't fast the day of Ashura or extra days, you're missing out on Allah. You really have no excuse not to fast this Ashura. And additional days in the future, while the days are short. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Wasallam said, fasting the day of Ashura is expiation for sins committed in the previous year. Your sins of the whole entire year before will be forgiven inshallah. Ashura is among the holiest days because not only was it the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued Musa alayhi salatu wasalam from Fir'aun, but Ashura was obligatory day of fasting before Ramadan. Lamma farad Allah Ramadan qal مَنْ شَاءَ صَامَ وَمَنْ شَاءَ تَرَكَ In both Bukhari and Muslim, when Ramadan was ordained, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ashura is no longer obligatory. If you want to fast it, fast it. You don't want to fast it, you don't have to. It became sunnah. It was so essential that they trained their kids, their little kids, to fast it. Rubaiya bint Mu'awwad ibn Afra, she said the Prophet ﷺ on the 10th day of Muharram would send a messenger to the towns and say, on this day, continue fasting if you fast, and if you didn't fast, hold off from eating and drinking. She said, we used to have our kids fast, and when they would cry, we'd give them toys to play with. It was so important that they trained their kids to fast, and it was so important that if they didn't fast in respect to it, they would hold off from eating and drinking. Finally, the day of Ashura is a day of victory. It commemorates a day of victory. In a day that brings hope to this ummah, in the miserable status that we're in. The day of Ashura of Musa started off like our days today, dark days, where Muslims are humiliated, raped, and killed, and low, and with, ma with many howling, unleashed ruwaib, they're running around all over saying everything you can imagine. The people thought it was over. Inna la mudrakun, Musa were doomed. Inna la mudrakun, they told Musa. Musa alayhi salatu salam said, no, 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 no. My Lord is with me. He's going to give me victory. He's going to guide me. فَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ اضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرَ فَانْفَلَقَ فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ كَالطَّوْدِ الْعَظِيمِ We revealed to Musa, strike the sea with your stick. And it separated. And it parted. And each separate part became like a huge mountain. They thought it was the end. But it wasn't. Look what Allah said about that day. That promised day of Ashura. وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّ وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ We wish to do a favor to those who were weak, to those who were oppressed, those who were weak and oppressed in the land, and to make them rulers, and to make them inheritors. وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ وَنُمَكِّنَ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ And to establish them in the land. And we let Fir'aun and Haman and their soldiers receive that which they feared. May Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this ummah the rulers the inheritors, and establish us on this earth 
and show the Fir'auns, the so many Fir'auns in Haman's of today, the humility he showed the Fir'auns in Haman's of Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, next question.